for the third quarter, you started learning about the kingdom animalia. We started with some characteristics of animals, and then you learned about the vertebrates. And in this presentation, you're going to learn about the invertebrates. As was said in the last presentation, when we classify living things, we put living things into two large groups, animals and plants. We then take the animals and split those into two major groups, the vertebrates, which you learned about in the last presentation, and now you're going to learn about the invertebrates. Remember when you put in in front of a word, it means not. So you learned in the last presentation that vertebrate meant backbone. So invertebrate is going to be no backbone. Here are the animals that you need to learn this quarter that do not have a backbone. We're going to learn about eight groups of invertebrates. You're going to learn about the mollusks, flatworms, annelids, roundworms, sponges, echinoderms, cnidarians, and arthropods. The first invertebrate we're going to talk about are the mollusks. These are the ones like snails or squid, or it could be a scallop or a scuttlefish. They have soft bodies. They, many of them have a hard shell with a soft foot, especially like scallops and clams and the snails. A mantle covers the soft body. Uh, they can live on the land and water, especially you can find the snails. Or those of you that are in science club, you know I bring the oysters out of the water and they can live for a couple of days. Um, some examples are clams, snails, squid, and octopus. They are in the kingdom Animalia. Their phylum, because they are mollusks, phylum is mollusca. That these two are very important for you to remember. I'm not going to ask you to remember these, but it is interesting to see that in the class they are bivalvia, which is two valves, and gastropoda. It has a foot, poda means foot, and cephalopoda. Here are some pictures of the flatworms. Um, like their name says, they have flat bodies. Um, they, they are in the kingdom Animalia, and they're in the phylum Platyhelminthes. The annelids are like the earthworms that you see outside, especially after it rains. They have round, worm-like bodies. The bodies are divided into segments. Their digestive tract has two openings. Um, some examples are earthworms, leeches. So they are in the kingdom Animalia and the phylum Annelida. So that's how we get annelids. Roundworms have long, thin, round, worm-like bodies, but they don't have any segments like the annelids did in the earthworms. But these are the type of worms that your mother um, those mothers that don't let their children go barefoot because they're afraid they'll catch worms. These are the kind of worms they're afraid they're going to catch. They are also in the kingdom, Animalia, and these are in the phylum, Nematomata. Periphera are the sponges. These have bodies made of loosely joined specialized cells. They have flagella to circulate the water through the sponge filtering food. They're very, very primitive. They don't have digestive systems or nerves or brains. They just kind of sit there, and as the water and the stuff inside the water move through them, that kind of feeds them. They are in the kingdom Animalia and phylum Periphera. These are the two that I need you to remember. Echinoderms are our spiny skin. So when you see echino, that means spiny, and derm, like a dermatologist, means skin. So these are our spiny skins, like the sea stars, or the sand dollars, or these sea urchins. They have a water vascular system with tube feet. Their, their symmetry is radial. So see how the top is round, 
and so it has radial symmetry. The cnidarians are the stinging cells. They have the digestive cavity with one opening. You can see right here. Look at this guy. You can see the one opening that they have in here. Most have tentacles. And some examples are jellyfish, coral, hydra, and the sea anemone. Now, if you look, they're in the kingdom Animalia and in the phylum Cnidaria. So the way I remember it is when I was very first learning it. See how these have the eyes here? I think of those as the tentacles coming off the stinging tentacles. The arthropods are the largest animal group. They have a hard exoskeleton, whereas we have an endoskeleton. Endo means in, so our skeleton's inside our body, where these guys have an exoskeleton. You can see it's on the outside, and it's hard. If you've ever, like, stepped on a roach and it crunches, you are crunching their skeleton. They have segmented bodies, pairs of jointed appendages, they live on land and water, and there's four major groups of arthropods. The arachnids are the spiders, the centipedes and millipedes, crustaceans, which are like the crabs and the lobsters, and then your insects, flies, bees, butterflies, beetles, those type of things. They're all in the kingdom Animalia, and they have the phylum arthropoda. The arachnids are arthropods. Now, arachnid is the spider, word for spider. They have four pairs of legs, so eight legs. They have bodies divided into two sections. Very important that you remember their bodies are in two sections, unlike the insects. The centipedes and millipedes are also arthropods. They have long, thin bodies and see the pairs of legs on each side and look how segmented they are. So don't get those confused with the annelids and the earthworms. The crustaceans are also arthropods, and these are going to be the crabs and lobsters and the scorpion. They have five to seven pairs of legs. The first pair are often these pinchers here that you see, or like on a crab here. They have those huge pincers or claws. The bodies are covered with shells. Again, that exoskeleton. Insects have three pairs of legs, and the bodies are divided into three sections, whereas the spiders or the arachnids had two sections. And a lot of times the insects will have wings. The next several slides are going to quiz you. They'll show you a picture of an animal, and you're going to tell whether it's a mollusk, an annelid, periphera, echinoderm, cnidarian, or arthropod. This will give you practice. So do it over and over and over until those characteristics of each one start to stick into your mind. Because later I'm going to ask you to go to Nearpod, and you're going to actually take it as an activity that's going to be graded. So learn it off of this video. So do it over and over until they start to stick into your mind. Thanks. It's an annelid, a round body divided into segments.